The following is a presentation of Cartoon Network Sports. Tonight on the Slade Rock and Quarry Company pregame show, the road to the championship game. A look back at last year's matchup. An in-depth analysis of the Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote. Interviews with real live experts. A look at the making of the halftime show. And polyester blazers galore. Plus much, much more. The Slade Rock and Quarry Company pregame show begins now. Good evening, everybody. I'm Len Dawson, together with Chris Collinsworth, Nick Bonacani, and Jerry Glanville, welcoming you to the Slate Rock and Quarry Company pregame show. And, fellas, here we are once again for another big game. Can you believe this? Who would have thought when we were here just a year ago for Sylvester versus Tweety that we would be here tonight with two different competitors, the Roadrunner and Wild E. Coyote. I'll tell you one thing, Lenny, I would never have believed it. Hey, Chris, you remember doing the pregame for last year's big game? I wasn't here last year, Jerry. What was that? I wasn't here last year. <laughs> would you leave it alone, all right? Oh, that's right. What'd you do? Lock your keys in the uh, car? Shut up, Jerry. Yeah. Shut up. Well, we knew early on that the Roadrunner and Wild E. were going to be contenders. But honestly, whoever thought that they could take it this far? I did. I really did. <laughs> Sure you did. I you did. know everything. I did. Hey, I know one thing. You talk about a beautiful night for this matchup. The desert air is cooling off a little bit as the sun has gone down. Nick, how do you think the weather is going to affect our competitors here tonight? Well, you know, you're right. It's such a gorgeous night tonight. But when you're talking about the Roadrunner and Coyote, you've got to remember this. They're used to this desert weather. Right. But when these two play away from the desert, that's when they have trouble adjusting. Remember the Roadrunners games in Buffalo? Yeah. Hey, that was back in early December. Gotcha. That snow really affected his running game. Uh, actually, it was more of a stopping game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little trouble. Hey, hey, Jerry, tell me this. How does the weather affect Wild E's game? Same kind of thing, Lenny. Although when Wild E's playing in cold weather, it doesn't affect him as much as it does that acne gear of his. When you get your acne rocket launcher or your acne atomic skates, a lot of times antifreeze and snow tires don't come standard. And that can be a real problem. It's a real problem, guys. I tell you that luckily then both teams are playing with a home field advantage, so it should be a fairly even matchup. Well, I wouldn't exactly <laughs> say that with these two. Well, maybe it's going to change here this evening. Now, anyone want to hazard a guess? What's going through these guys' heads? Well, Lenny, that's a tough call. Well, I'm thinking while he's got to be a little nervous, you know, a big crowd already gathered in the stadium for tonight's game. Plus, you have to factor in everybody's watching at home. Now, that's a lot of pressure for one coyote Ooh, to take. Oh, that's a lot of pressure for anybody. What about the road runner? Well, on the other side of the coin, he's gone undefeated all season. He knows Wiley's game and I think he's come here tonight just ready to have a little fun. Little fun, huh? Just like the song says, running down the road is his idea of having fun. Jerry Glanville, when you know your competitor is relaxed, that can be quite intimidating. That's true. Coyote has to block that out of his head and focus at the task at hand, which is winning. And if you can't focus on that, just imagine everybody in the stadium naked. naked. And that should calm your nerves a bit. I know it always works for me. That's yeah, but you're different. <laughs> Much different than anybody else. You naughty rascal, you, I'll tell you that. On that note, let's take a look back at what's been an unforgettable 1999 season. Both rookie and veteran have made the race to the 28th big game, one for the record books. We've seen the Powerpuff girls perform yeah. brilliantly in what's great. been a tremendous rookie year for them with solid wins against tough competitors like Fuzzy Lumpkins oh, and Fuzzy. Mojo Jojo. Oh, it's clear these girls will 
remain a force to be reckoned with in the years to come. Oh, Mojo, yes, indeed. And the introduction of new expansion teams, I am Weasel right. and I are oh, Baboon. Oh, yeah, they brought some spice to a division that's yeah. been lacking in talented uh, rodents and primates. You know, it's, I see a strong rivalry rodents forming between <laughs> these two. Exactly. Veteran player Daffy Duck broke his own record in most face masks received, while yes, Pepe Le Pew continued to reinvent the game with his romantic rushing game and stinky offensive line. Huey. But the 1999 season belonged to the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote. You said it, Chris. These two critters have played their little critter hearts out all season mm -hmm. long. They all started with that announcement from Wile E. that he would no longer play, listen to this, Jerry, with the help of any Acme products. Wow. Wow. Hey, man, yeah. I'll tell you. That needless to say, you're right. This radical move ended up biting Coyote in the fanny. Ooh. After he lost his first game to a Smurf, he got wise and he re-signed with Acme. Boy, he got a lot of money for that, too. And hundreds of gadgets later, here he is yes, today. Sir. Yes, now sir. the Roadrunner, although a top contender each year, could not afford to sit idly by the season. Not with competition like Speedy Gonzalez, oh, yeah. Quickie, Koala, Koala yeah, right. and the Flash breathing down his long ostrich neck. <laughs> but this bird is no cuckoo. He increased his training, studied his opponents, and won himself a trip to the big game. Oof. You know, I spoke to the Flash recently to get an idea of what it's like to compete against a powerhouse like the Roadrunner. He was tight-lipped until I posed the question, who would win in a race between the Flash and the Roadrunner? Uh -huh. yeah. Well, Flash started muttering something about being an invaluable member of the Justice League. Then he just broke down crying. Oh, right. Yeah. Man, that's Come too on. bad. Well, that's just how fast this bird is. Hey, to me, making a super friend weep like a little girl is the mark of a true athlete. Oh, really? That's right. I tell you, Double R has it all. He has speed, smarts, and the whole beep, beep. thing he <laughs> yeah. does is absolutely precious. You must have a little road runner. <laughs> that's right. That was good. Yeah, but that's that sort of talent, I'm afraid. Our mangy friend, Coyote, he's fresh out of oh. that. Hold the phone, Nick. Hold the phone. Talent is exactly what got him here today. You want talent? Watch Coyote take a spill off El Capitan, then turn around and build a roadrunner seeking robot. On the very next down, sure, it sounds pretty random, but these are studied plays, and this is a sharp coyote. Yeah, sharp, man. yeah. Sharp Come on, with... Jerry. He's as sharp as a wet pillow. I'm oh, shocked this coyote's even sharp. got his paws on that gridiron today. Okay, when it comes to forming what he likes to call his strategy, yeah, he's meticulous. No one can accuse him of not doing his homework. It's just that the teacher always returns it with a big, fat, red F at oh, the top no, of that no. page. Oh, oh Nelly, no, well, Professor Bonacane, let's let the Roadrunner and Coyote's actions speak for themselves as we take a look back at their 1999 season.
Boy, that's really nice. I love how the clips really match with the music and that slow motion makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. That's really powerful stuff, man, I love my job. Hey, easy there, buddy. We're not even at the game yet. <laughs> but I do like your enthusiasm. You know, I am indeed enthused. And now let's take a look at last year's big game, Lynn. And you should be enthused. Thank you very much, Chris. Jerry, it's been a year now since we sat at this very desk gearing up for the big game 27 when Sylvester and Tweety faced off in a contest where the adorable Tweety Bird was the ultimate victor. Are you surprised that this year's matchup isn't a repeat of these two competitors? I can't say that I am, Len. I mean, don't get me wrong. Both Sylvester and Tweety put up one heck of a fight early on this season. If only Tweety could have stayed off the disabled list. Disabled list? What do you mean? Well, l listen. Last season, when Tweety took it all the way to the big game, he was always on guard, using everything he had to steer clear of Sylvester. Unfortunately, that tail feather injury right. in early October set him off balance for the rest of the season. And that's saying a lot, considering that melon of his. <laughs> Normally, this guy's like a weeble. You know, he wobbles, but he won't fall down. Well, not this year. All I can say is, thank goodness, Granny knows the Heimlich. Absolutely. Right. You'll have to agree, though, Jerry, that Sylvester was at the top of his game most of the season. Why, then, isn't he here tonight, sans Tweety? Well, I know, Lenny, because it's a lack of motivation. Whether he likes it or not, Sylvester needs Tweety. It's all about the anticipation. Remember Moonlighting? Did oh, you yeah, watch oh, the yeah. show after Maddie and Dave hooked up? Right. No, no I kind of lost its spark after exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I happened to Sylvester's game after he proved to himself that he could consistently get Tweety back toward his epiglottis, he lost his spark and his interest in the competition. Well, perhaps then it's better to remember them how they once were at the top of their respective games for the big game 27. January 30th, 1999. Frizz Frailing Coliseum. The big game 27 was a competition that finally answered the question. Could a bird and a cat, bound together by the shared experience of growing up with speech impediments, peacefully resolve their primal differences on the level playing field of organized sport? The answer? No. No, they couldn't. Coming out strong after the kickoff, Sylvester would take to the air early in the first quarter, using the corset formation only to be sacked by Tweety in a play that would, in hindsight, set the tone for the rest of the game. Nonplussed, Sylvester would call upon one of his trademark tactics, the famed dress the finger up like a living doll routine. As happened so often with this particular play, it didn't work at all. Sylvester would bite down vigorously upon his own finger, just as he had on every previous attempt since the beginning of his career. The second quarter saw the feline's fortune turn temporarily for the better, as he drove back the imperiled Tweety with a badminton racket, forcing the loss of valuable yardage for the bird. The victory would be short-lived, however, with the feline ultimately becoming the recipient of Tweety's long bow. Using Sylvester's discompobulated state to his full advantage, Tweety began his psychological game, getting into Sylvester's head and railroading him to the end of the first half. The second half wouldn't get much better for Sylvester, who lost ground early, taking to the water and never quite getting his sea legs. Nausea led to insult. Insult led to injury. And injury led to the business end of Granny's umbrella. For a brief moment late in the fourth quarter, crowds witnessed a bit of the spitfire Sylvester once was in his glory days on the semi-pro circuit. But it would be only a peak. In the end, Tweety soundly defeated Sylvester 57-3, to proving that in the big game, Either you come ready to play, or you leave lifeless and alone around the neck of an old man. Coming up on the Slate Rock and Glory pregame show, an in-depth look at tonight's competitors and expert analysis from Jack Hanna when we return.